Hello friends! Right now I am working on a beginner guide video and I've never done a beginner's guide video before. I've always made videos with the idea that the person watching already knows about Lolita fashion, but I've learned over the years that that definitely isn't always the case. So I've decided to take some time and really put together a great where to start, how to start beginner's guide that I hope will be really easy to digest and really easy to understand but also won't be overly complicated and overwhelming. While working on that, I've had a couple other ideas for videos that will kind of complement it and go along with it. And in my research and writing, I've come across this tag that I've seen in the beauty community about what if they had to start over? What if I lost all of my Lolita and had to just start from the beginning, what would I do? What would I start with? What would I replace first? I can't really sit and think about that for too long because it is deeply upsetting. I've been collecting Lolita for over 10 years. Some pieces I waited six, seven years for. Actually, Twinkle Mermaid. I saw it in 2006 and really wanted it and had to wait until 2016 to get it. I'm not gonna resonate on the actual loss of it for too long and just get straight into what I would do. I think that this video is just a fun experiment and will help me think about things from a beginner's perspective and this is not my beginner's guide. This is not what to do but this is just what I would do and it might help you or it might just be interesting to think about. I'm going to be using Angela Loves Cute uh, or Bellini Bunnies checklist for Lolita so that I don't forget anything and we go through all of the pieces that will be needed for coordinate. The first thing I'm gonna need if I'm rebuilding a Lolita wardrobe is money. <laughs> no matter what, I'm gonna need some base of money. I'm gonna need money to spend in order to buy Lolita. And what I did when I started Lolita and what I still do when I want to buy new pieces <laughs> is I look around at everything that I currently own and see what I could sell quickly and what I could profit from easily. When I was building my Lolita wardrobe initially, I happened to have a lot of Tamagotchis that I've been collecting and I had a rather large collection that I wasn't really using and I sold a lot of those because I knew that there was a market for it. I would go through all of my stuff, see what I could sell to make money, my figures, toys, video games. I would also look for areas of my life where I could save money, maybe eating fast food less, maybe um, spending less money on video games, maybe going out to events less. I talked about this a lot more in my why Lolita is expensive video and I talked about how to save up for it and I would basically do that. <laughs> Set aside a little bit of money here and there and start a fund within probably my PayPal. It's kind of an easy fee free place to just put money into it and save it and for most of the places that you're going to be buying Lolita online you need a PayPal. The next thing I would do once I have some sort of money and this is not a sponsorship, it's gonna sound like a sponsorship, sponsorship, but it absolutely is not. I would go to Devil Inspired and buy a dress. I know that Taobao might be cheaper, I know that using a shopping service might be cheaper, but the fact is, is it's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take longer than if I just bought from a Taobao reseller like Devil Inspired directly and then I will get it sooner, I might pay a little bit more, but I would do that so that I would have something quickly. This is a shocker because you're gonna think that the first thing I would buy is some brand piece, right? You're like, oh, Lore must immediately have to get something from Angelic Pretty. I would actually go to Devil Inspired and buy the gingham dress that I have. I've made a whole video about it. Normally, I wouldn't suggest that somebody buys a one piece first because normally having sleeves, you limit yourself to how many different ways you can style it. But I have found that with this gingham dress, I can, I just never run out of ways to style it. I don't know why, this is just a personal thing of mine. <laughs> Even my black gingham dress, I found ways to coordinate it in like country ways, in sweet ways, in like larm ways. I've worn it in not Lolita ways. There's a different updated one on Devil Inspired right now that's $58. It's really cute and now I actually want it. I was gonna go through the steps and buy things 
well not actually buy things but now I want to actually buy things this is so cute there's like more ruffles on it and it comes in different sizes are they sold out oh my god they're not sold out Okay, so theoretically what I would do is I would buy, it's $58, which is not a lot for a Lolita dress in general. I know that is still a good sizable amount of money, but for a Lolita dress, it's pretty affordable. Probably get a pink and black one so that at least I have two options that would be like under $200 for two dresses. I would have them sent quickly and then I would have something. Since this is an OP, I wouldn't have to get a blouse and I could just get some shoes and I could just even use cute Converse, pink Converse and like ruffle socks and then be good to go to a Lolita meetup. Oh, so in this scenario, do I not know about, am I out of the community? We, we'll, 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 we'll get into that. The next thing that I would do is I would go on Lolibrary and I would make the search selections JSK and then just look through basically all the JSKs. You know, for me, I would probably look through Angelic Pretty first and then Baby. And I would just compile a list of what I think would be most important to me and the things that I would want to get. So that, that way I have something to wear. I have my devil inspired piece. It's a mostly complete coordinate. I would just need some kind of headpiece and shoes and socks, which I could probably improvise with non Lolita items, stuff from Forever 21. You know, ankle socks from the costume store, cute tights, Mary, just plain Mary Janes. After I have comprised that list of the pieces that I want to look for, I would keep an eye on Lace Market, Wonderweld and Closet Child because those are the most easy to use secondhand resellers and I would just monitor them. The next thing that I would do is I would join a Lolita community. So I guess in this scenario, not only have I lost my entire Lolita wardrobe, but everyone's minds in the Lolita community have been wiped and no one knows me and I'm not involved in any community. And I can't think about this for too long or else I'm gonna get sad as well. <laughs> I would be really lonely if I lost the Lolita community because a lot of my friends are now that I even consider my family, like they came from Lolita. So I'd have to find a community so that I wouldn't be lonely. I would have to use Facebook. I hate Facebook. I only really use it so that I can share my YouTube stuff and to communicate with like events and things, but I really don't like using Facebook, but I would make one specifically just to be involved with the community. And the important thing of why I would want to get a dress quickly is because Facebook communities for Lolita often require that you be approved to join it. And each community has different requirements. Some of them you just have to kind of answer questions so that they know that you're there for the right reasons. And then other communities, they want to actually see that you wear Lolita and that you're involved in it. And that might sound to someone who's a newcomer like gatekeepy or restrictive and, you know, not fair. But the reason that this is isn't because the community wants to be any of those things it's because people have abused the communities before people with bad intentions would have joined communities in the past and role played as lolitas and mistreated lolitas i this is all stuff that i guess i should include in a horror stories episode but it's happened and moderators have had to kick people and so just to kind of protect Lolitas, especially because a lot of communities have minors, there is that vetting process to make sure that you're there because you actually enjoy Lolita, you want to be involved in Lolita fashion and you're not there to troll or role play or do anything unsavory. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why it would be important for me to get something so that I could prove myself and also so that I could attend a meetup. I would look for a swap meet meetup because that would help me immensely to rebuild my wardrobe and I would also look for big picnic meetups because then I could make friends easily. Maybe not specifically a picnic meetup but just like a big bigger meetup that's more casual. I wouldn't join a community and then immediately go to a fancy high tea because at high teas you're kind of limited to 
like the space and it's smaller and more serious and I would just look for something more casual where I could meet more people and socialize more and yeah just look for a more chill experience. Another great thing about joining the community is that you will find Lolitas who are hunters. They are the people who they are there for the hunt. They love looking and finding dresses even if it's not for them they will keep lists of what people are looking for and they will hunt it down and they enjoy helping people find pieces that is honestly how i have gotten a lot of the dream pieces that i have it's because i've told friends that are this type of lolita that are hunter lolitas hey i'm looking for twinkle mermaid can you help me find it and then they make it part of their mission to hunt for it and look for it probably one of the first things i also should have bought was a petticoat after your main piece i think it's probably an important thing to buy <laughs> i would go for a me likes tea petticoat that's sort of mid-range i wouldn't go for a huge one right away huge gigantic one because you'll be limited to the amount certain dresses that it will fit under. Investing in a good petticoat is one of the quintessential parts of Lolita. As much as I didn't do that when I was starting, it definitely made my life so much easier once I did get a good petticoat. I wouldn't let not having a petticoat keep me from going to meets though. I would just explain you know, I'm new or I'm still rebuilding my wardrobe kind of thing and I think that people would be forgiving of that. Okay, so then what would I do next? I have a main piece, I have a petticoat, I'm involved in a community. I think I would probably have a top five of the pieces that I want. Be looking for those, I would ask friends to help me look for those. And then I would work towards just getting one of those. Once I would be able to get one of those pieces, that's when I would start building up my blouses, my shoes, my socks. I think those are the next key steps after you have a main piece and a petticoat. I would definitely buy a beret. I can't see a time and place where I wouldn't have a beret, but I would definitely buy a beret because I think that it's a universal piece for Lolita. Focus on getting that brand piece. Even if I can't wear the brand piece right away, even if it just sits for a little while, I would have something to work towards and have something to build around. After I have a somewhat complete cord, I have a headpiece, a blouse, a main piece, legwear and shoes. That's when I would honestly go buy this necklace again. I don't know if you can see it. Because this is the first BB&B piece that I ever saw and it is just so stinking cute and so perfect and I think that it adds so much to a coordinate in just one piece. You can step up a simple sweet coordinate with this necklace and just make it adorable and it's the it can be the center focal piece. And this again is not a sponsorship. I'm completely being honest with you. I would buy this piece. This would be the first piece of jewelry I would rebuy. <laughs> and I would move forward still trying to keep my focus being on recollecting main pieces and then here and there when I have a little bit of extra money, I would buy more blouses that would work. As a Lolita, you do not have to stick to one style at all, but it does mean that having multiple styles, you will have to buy. So if I had to rebuild, I would mainly focus on sweet. I would find one area to really invest in and keep sticking with that because that would be the quickest route. I would just move forward with that. It would take me another probably 10 years to rebuild it but making sure that the pieces that I get would work with one another that I don't have anything that is just stuck and that I can't coordinate with anything else. If I did kind of feel that I recklessly bought something and that it doesn't match anything else I would sell it on lace market. Another thing too that I did when I was starting out and I still kind of do to this day is I will sell a dress in order to buy another dress. That's why my closet isn't as big as other Lolitas who have been collecting for years is because I try to wear my pieces as many ways as I can and then when I run out of ways to wear them I will sell them to get another piece. I hope that maybe this helped you or entertained you. If you're starting out maybe these are things that you can consider when building your wardrobe and if you already are a Lolita I'm really curious what things you would repurchase first to rebuild your wardrobe. If you have any advice to add to this, please leave them in the comments below and stay lovely!